Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet, the John Campy Show. Coming from right here on our YouTube channel, brought to you in part by our friends over at Mint Mobile. I am, of course, your host, John Campia, and it is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day, to have you, our international friends, gather around as we talk about our favorite things in the world, movies and movie news, TV and streaming, all sorts of good stuff. Join today by one Chris Carr. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I had a wonderful Sunday. I got to go on a five-mile walk and hang out with one of my actor study buddy group friends. It was so nice. And sitting right beside Chris, joining us today, filling in for Rob, who will be back a little bit later today, but he had some stuff he had to take care of this morning. Aaron Cummings is here today on a Monday. Aaron, how you Hello. doing? Hello, I am fresh back from shooting another episode of Nancy Drew for the CW in uh, Vancouver, the, in the beautiful country of Canada. And uh, I decided that I was going to wear my new shirt, this one. Uh, yeah. which says it is a Lord of the Rings shirt because as we all know, I'm the biggest Lord of the Rings fan ever. Just kidding, <laughs> I'm not. But I like the message of the shirt that says, we are all welcome here in Tolkien. And I decided to wear it for the very first time on my flight back from Canada. And you can only imagine my horror when the person sitting next to me was Elijah Wood. And I was like... <laughs> Hi. So this is awkward. And because uh, he obviously saw the shirt and was like, I'm terrified of what's about to come out of your mouth right now. He uh, posed with that shirt, too. Did you see that? He, yeah, yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got he, he has a picture out where him and on. a couple of other people. That's posed. why I bought the yeah. shirt was because I was I was like, I don't really care about Lord of the Rings, but I love the message of the shirt. And I want to support that. It was designed by Don Marshall and you can get one yourself. And so. He has the shirt and then I'm wearing the shirt and then he's sitting right there. And I was like, I just got to call the elephant in the room. But ultimately, really nice guy. Had a lovely flight long conversation with him. Aww. Just couldn't have been more wonderful. And uh, and so, uh, yeah, go check out uh, the inclusion shirt from Don Marshall. And you, me and Elijah Wood can all be besties. Uh, that is actually a pretty cool story. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, flying back from Canada, uh, happy Canadian Thanksgiving to everybody. Or as it is actually called. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, joining us also sitting back here, he's joining you guys in the live chat today, and he's going to be a competitor in today's game. Ray Oris here. Ray, how you doing? That <sighs> good, huh? <laughs> this game is going to be the worst game. I've he's ever. so Every worried time, about this game, and then he's going to win. Sitting beside Ray, of course, running the show today, <laughs> producer Jonathan Boyko. Jonathan, how you doing? Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how everything works here. Uh, and uh, that's we what we're doing every day. And guys, <laughs> most importantly, you are joining us here today. Thank you for making this show part of your day. And here's how today's show is going to go. We're going to break it into two parts. In the first half of the show, we're going to talk about some predetermined topics. Then in the second half of the show, we're going to take your live comments and questions. The way you get a live comment or question is thus. Number one, you got to be watching live. Number two, when we get to the end of the main topics, we'll announce that we're opening up the Super Chats. We only leave them open for a couple of minutes, and that'll be your chance to fire in your thoughts, theories, opinions, and questions, and we'll address those in the second half of the show. Being Monday today, a little bit later this afternoon, around 3 p.m. Los Angeles time, we're going to be doing our live open spoiler discussion of our Game of Thrones House of the Dragon after show. We hope you guys will come on back and join us for that, especially if you watched last night's awesome episode. We'll talk a little bit about it in non-spoilery ways here in just a little bit this morning. All right. With that down, guys, we got a lot to get to today. So let's get things started off today with the newest segment of the John Campus Show. Our friends at Mint Mobile bringing us the Mint Mobile Hotline Question of the Day. If you've got a question you'd like us to have on our Mint Mobile Hotline Question of the Day, just call us anytime at 951 268 Four two five nine. Leave your message question, and maybe you'll hear it on the show. So, Jonathan, what's our Mint Mobile hotline question today? Hey, John, it's William from Youngstown, Ohio. My question is: Since Hugh Jackman has returned as Wolverine, what chances do you think Daphne Keene will join the MCU? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. You know, thanks a lot for saying that. In ever since the glorious day that they announced that Hugh Jackman was going to take on the claws one more time to be in a Deadpool 3 movie, which we all know has been in the works for years, but still, ever since that day, the question I've heard most people asking has been, will X-23, Daphne Keene? Daphne Keene was wonderful in Logan. Like, one of the, aside from Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart, she was probably the biggest reason that movie worked so well. Like, the scenes where she just starts ripping at Wolverine in Spanish 
or like some of my favorite <laughs> scenes where she's just going off on him and the combat scenes and all that kind of, she was great in it and she's gone on to do a lot more stuff as well could we see her back my guess is no um for a couple of reasons the biggest one though of course is i do not believe that any of the regular ongoing x universe uh uh characters that are going to be in the mcu will be recycles of the ones from the fox era obviously hugh jackman and deadpool is a, is a lark that's going to be an exception hugh jackman will not be our wolverine moving forward you know we're going to get a new wolverine here soon so that's the biggest reason why i really don't think we can see her coming back and then you could raise the question well could she appear then in deadpool 3 well you could but that's really not part of the whole shtick i mean the ryan reynolds hugh jackman thing is a years-long thing they've been laying the groundwork for for this forever and you know daphne Keene, as wonderful as she is is just really not a part of that any more than i don't know what's the name ashmore sean ashmore sean who played, ashmore, who played yeah. bobby who played iceman any more than he's a part of that so my guess is unfortunately no, I don't think we're going to see her again. What do you think, Chris? Are there chances we can see Daphne Keene in the MCU? I mean, in the MCU at some point, possibly. But if we are working with the Logan timeline, he doesn't meet X-23 until 2029. So that's out. Also, that story doesn't have anything to do with the Deadpool story that we're doing here, right? Especially because so many people are freaking out about the legacy of Logan. I doubt they would bring her in. If they did, it'd be some goofy time portal cameo kind of thing that I don't think fits the vibe that they're going for ultimately. Could she return as X-23 at some point? I would love that. She's busy doing his Dark Materials right now, which apparently oh, is on, she's on its third season. very good in, yeah. Yeah, so she's got other stuff in the works, but I mean, she's such a great actress and she's so killer in that role. If you've never seen her audition tape of that, whoo, she's like climbing on bookshelves and shit. It's amazing, <laughs> she's killer. So I'd love to see her come back, but definitely I don't think she's gonna be in Deadpool 3. Aaron, what do you think? Could we see Daphne Keene pop up in the MCU? I completely agree with both of you for all the reasons why you've already said, but I also I'll definitely agree that we will see her in the MCU and maybe not even necessarily as X-23. I mean, well, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Does, does it have to be? No, as not at all. In fact, especially as she, uh, you know, ages and matures, she could very well age into a totally different type of character that makes more sense for her at the age she is then versus when she you know the age that she was when she played x23 so i would not be surprised if we see that and then maybe she has a character that is self-sufficient and doesn't need to be tied necessarily to wolverine because also since she was with the um hugh jackman wolverine would it even make sense for us to see her with whoever the new actor is that play i don't think so so i'm looking forward to seeing uh daphne keen in her own in her own you know role on uh, in the MCU that is not necessarily tied to Wolverine. I mean, I think the two big points there are she could play another character at some yeah. point, and the fact that yeah, you're right, she's at this point in the MCU she would be three years old. Yep. Uh, dep depending if they wanted to follow that. Just a little fighter fetus that could make sense. <laughs> 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 Never <laughs> mind. Beep, 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 beep. By right, the way, a toddler who's just like. <laughs> when I was looking up some information last mm -hmm. night on Daphne Keene, I came across her Instagram account. Which she's very active on Instagram. And here's the thing. You remember everybody in movies you watched just as they were in those movies. Mm -hmm. Daphne Keene's gotten older. Surprise. Yeah. And it was just weird because she poses... Let's just say she puts up some provocative photo photos on her Instagram thing. It's like... I can't wrap my head around that this is You're a like baby. 23. Yeah. Well, but that I, was what Maxim was for back in the day. It was so that yes. all the Disney actresses who were not being invited to play uh, more mature roles were like, okay, how about this, Disney? I'm just going to go pose for Maxim, and you're <laughs> probably going to let me out of my contract. And they did. It worked really well for some people. How did it, did it work for you, too? No comment? Okay, good. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think? Would you like, I think most of us would like to see X-23 again, but do you think there's really a, a realistic way that they could do it? Do you think she could pop up in the MCU as X-23? Maybe as somebody else. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. With that down, special day today, we're going to do two Mint Mobile hotline questions today. So let's get on to one more. Jonathan, what else do we got in the Mint Mobile hotline? Hey, John, this is Dustin Barton. I've been listening to you for a long time. I was just wondering, how come with Disney Plus premieres and with weekly episodes, they don't 
air those at around like seven or eight, like a lot of other places do, thinking House of the Dragon for HBO Max. I feel like there would be a lot more engagement with the show on social media and stuff that they would have put it, you know, before midnight. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And, yeah, listen, I we've talked about this before. Why does Disney choose to release new episodes of their shows, their premium shows like She-Hulk or Andor or, you know, WandaVision, whatever? Why at midnight? At least for us in Los Angeles, it's midnight. For a lot of other people watching, it's even worse. It's like if you're on the East Coast, it's 3 a.m. Mm. What's the point of that? Why not release it earlier? All right. Let me first play devil's advocate for a second and suggest this. What Disney might say to you is that we're not releasing it late at midnight. We're releasing it super early. So instead <laughs> of making you wait another... What would, uh, how many hours would 7 p.m. be? 19 hours? We're creatives. I, we don't know math. Yeah, that, whatever. I have to figure that out. But anyway, instead of you ma making you wait all the way to 7 p.m., we're going to put it out like uh, 7 to 19. Yeah, we're going to put it out 19 hours earlier. 19 hours earlier, we're going to put it out. So we're put. yeah, so Disney would say, don't look at us as putting out late. Look at it as us putting it out early. And actually, you know what? To a degree, I, I kind of get that. I do. But you bring up House of the Dragon, and that is a great example because you know what it does every Sunday? Our nights are planned. Mm -hmm. Millions of households across America and the world, their Sunday nights are planned. People build their social calendar around when House of the Dragon is going to drop. And the idea, like, I don't understand why Disney and Disney Plus doesn't recognize that and take advantage of that so that everybody can kind of be on the same page and put this thing out at 7 p.m., even if, even if it's 10 p.m. East Coast time, that's still early enough for most people to watch, or 6 p.m. Los Angeles time, 9 p.m., whatever. Listen, I don't think Disney's going to change. I don't think they're going to move off this because clearly they are having success with it. But I am a 1,000% with you. I think absolutely. And you know what? I, I've even changed my position on this a bit because I think there was a time when I kind of felt like, nah, midnight's a cool thing to do. But you know what? I've totally changed my mind, especially after seeing the success that House of the Dragon is having, the fact that we all plan, people come over, we have viewing parties, we barbecue, we do all this kind of stuff just for that show. I think they can have that same sort of thing. So I think they absolutely should change it to that. But I don't think they will. Chris, what do you think about this? I don't think they will because they want my life to be terrible. Mm, they're <laughs> after me. I, I'm, I am a young person with the soul of an aged Nona. And I, <laughs> as everyone in this room knows, put my phone on Do Not Disturb by 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. and go to sleep at 9.30. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Disney, you're a menace because now I wake up at like 7 a.m. to watch these shows. I really agree that having that that set prime time kind of slot though creates community and and narrative around your show then. You know, I every Sunday go over to my friend Colin's house. We all smoke chicken and we have like this big discussion <laughs> afterwards. Is wow. that what we're calling it? What these kind days? of hide is that? You put chicken in a chicken. You put chicken in a bowl. You bong, would know more about this. You... If you got master class, you could learn how to debone a whole chicken. <laughs> so we have all food. of that sounded like innuendo, by I the know. way. But anyway, no. please continue. I'm I'm in Rob's chair today. It's gonna fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we like we cook we watch the show we have a discussion afterwards right it's so nice whereas it's great that i have this with you guys when i come in in the morning i get to go oh my gosh you know she hulk last night let's talk about that but for regular life i'm not gonna like wake up somebody at 12 30 and be like can i talk to you about this episode right now it's obnoxious i hate it what do you think aaron do you, do you think they would change it to a more reasonable time do you think they should change it to a more reasonable time. I don't think that they will, but I think that they should. I mean, the HBO's really had this an understanding of this. I mean, I remember back, back, back in the day, we used to have Sex in the City Sundays, and this was way before streaming, and this was the first Sex in the City before any of the movies came out. We would all get together, we would smoke some chicken. Yeah, <laughs> Your air and then yeah. you know and then we would watch the show together and it was a communal event and we would talk about it and then we would you know we would discuss it afterwards and then you know if we had social media back in the day we probably would have been tweeting and live streaming our responses and things like that and you're absolutely right HBO has known that that is that the communal aspect of television watching is something that can still exist in the land of streaming and yes 
You can watch it anytime you want, but if you create an environment where people want to gather, that's when you have entire bars packed with people to watch the season finale of a show like we saw with Game of Thrones. They don't want they they don't want to end that communal engagement because there's going to be red wedding reactions to House of the Dragon that they want people to experience with one another as if people are watching a football game. You know, you want people to have that those oh shit moments together where everyone explodes and it's not just a solitary experience. So I, I and so I think that yes, it would be wonderful if they did it also so that I didn't have to uh, watch the show on my phone while I'm driving to work to be able to talk about it. Yeah, don't drive near me. Um, <laughs> But uh, I don't know if I don't see them doing it, but I would highly uh, appreciate if they did. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about that? Do you think it would be better if Disney just put out their shows at a time that people, you know, could actually watch them when they drop? Or do you think like the whole strategy of dropping them at midnight or 3 a.m. is actually something that works well? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Now, you may think that smoking chicken is smooth. But you know what's smoother? My balls, thanks oh to my our God, friends. Oh my God, Jesus And Christ. sponsor of today's episode, our friends at Manscaped. I'm oh, glad you didn't say mint moment. <laughs> we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Now guys, you know, I love Manscaped. You've heard me go on and on about the Lawnmower 4.0 and mm, that body wash. I love it so much. And so we got to ask, guys, have you started your spring cleaning yet? The carpets need cleaning, the drapes need dusting, and your lawn needs mowing, gentlemen. And you guys know Manscaped isn't more than just one product. They have a whole lineup of products to help you guys feeling, smelling, and looking your best. And so Manscaped is proud to present to you the Performance Package 4.0, which is the only tool that you need to keep your boys looking, smelling, and feeling good this spring. Now, to start off with, you get the Lawnmower 4.0. Guys, we have talked about this. What is wrong with us? Why have we for so long been using these terrible tools that were never meant for cutting our hair down there? The razor clipper things on our electric razors. That's barbaric, guys. You need the Lawnmower 4.0. And then there's the Weed Whacker. You guys have heard our own Ray Aura talk about this thing. He loves using it to get that hair in your nose and the ear hair and then they offer lots of other stuff like the crop preserver it's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer the crop reviver it's a spray on toner for your balls and of course they've got the perfect grooming tool for your face with the plow 2.0 the perfect razor for the finest shave on that face so guys get 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code campia that's c-a-m-p-e-a at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the promo code Campia at manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. And thank you to our friends at Manscaped for giving us that delightful vision and, of course, being sponsors, longtime sponsors of the John Campia Show. Okay, guys. Yeah, you lucky. Just Tom, be happy I didn't throw it over to Aaron for that because she had some stuff lined <laughs> oh, up. Oh, yeah. I um, definitely <laughs> enjoy my husband's man package now that it's been manscaped. Now, see, guys, <laughs> look what manscaped can do for you. Anyway, that all down, let's get into our main topics here today, shall we? And how do we select our main topics? Well, that's easy. You guys come up with our main topics. This is where we need you because when you guys come across a big topic issue or story that you guys feel we absolutely must cover as a main topic on the show, just go anytime 24-7 over to www.thejohncampiashow.com slash contact. Once you guys get there, you're going to see a form. Fill it out with your topic or question. If you could see it there. Hold on a second. Sorry, my, my, name, my name tag is overlapping the, uh, the screen. There we go. <laughs> there, there it is right there. Fill out the form. It's absolutely free. Hit submit. And then maybe, just maybe, you might see your submission featured as a main topic here on the John Campia Show. With that down, Aaron, what is our first main topic today? This comes to us from Eddie. Just finished watching House of the Dragon, episode eight. How, how, how? How does the show keep doing it week after week? The drama is insane. The characters keep getting more complex. When huge moments of action happen, they have huge importance to the story, and it just keeps getting more and more tragic. Did you guys see the episode? Obviously. And what did you think of it? Thanks. 
All right, Eddie, thanks a lot for sending that in. And obviously, we're going to try to talk about this in some very non-spoilery ways. We're going to go more fully in depth of it, uh, of course, later today on our House of the Dragon after show. Once again, that's going to be at 3 o'clock Los Angeles time. We hope you join us there. But all I could think of without giving any way details, I really wish Ray was over last night mm. because Damon maybe had his <laughs> finest moment of the series, uh, which was so incredibly badass. Mm -hmm. I Again, another big time jump. And you know what? I have always loved Patty's playing Viserys. Yeah. You know, I, I've said before, they should have just renamed the show from House of the Dragon to How Life Shits on Viserys This Week. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because that's that's all it is. It's just this dude always constantly trying to do what is right, trying to do the best he can, trying to do, you know, best for his family and everybody in the world. And like everything just always craps all over him. Life just craps on him week after week. And this week is no exception. But I mean, it certainly said, looked like he had been crapped oh, all over. Yeah. My, my God, his performance in this was just his performances. This whole series has been exquisite this week. He just owned it. And I. God, I love him in this show. I, I mean, I just can't believe how much I love the show. I mean, all of us were asking, how is House of the Dragon going to be able to follow up Game of Thrones? Uh, two, two questions. One, how's it going to be able to follow up Game of Thrones? Probably the most pop culturally successful show in history. And then for some people who didn't like the final season, how's it going to win them back over? Mm -hmm. And it's just crushed both of them. It's just absolutely crushed both of them. I cannot believe how good this has been. Again, uh, Sapotnik said a few weeks ago that we're now getting into a transition where we're moving away from these characters we've known and putting a lot more focus on the children of these characters now. That's never been more obvious than this week, um, which, which was just, in, again, insane. The drama now we're seeing before them. How many more time jumps we have? I don't know. Two episodes Ugh. left. Uh, yeah, there we get you. a look at the brother asshole. Oh. Um, and, and again, is it just me? Or as Amond, the brother in the background, isn't he just Count R R uh, Rashu from the uh, Charlie Sheen uh, Three Musketeers? He was also the sheriff's cousin. <laughs> I'm talking about. He looks. You make that blonde hair dark. He looks just like the bad guy from He's Three Crispin Musketeers. He's Crispin Glover with an eye patch. And, and he looked yes, 15 years older than his older brother. Than his yeah. older brother is. Yeah, there was a little. There was a little bit of that too. But I'll tell you what. You're right. There does not need to be action in this show for every scene to be thrilling and mm -hmm. heart pounding. Mm -hmm. The way they build the drama, the way they build the characters, the way they build the narrative. It's just, and you you find yourself emotionally rooting for certain characters and for things to happen. And there's a moment between, you know, again, I won't say what it was, but there's a moment between Renera and Allison in this that you just felt like, yes, yeah. the world is good. And then no, no life is going to shit on nope. Viserys again mm -hmm. one more time. I the, the episode, again, this episode was fantastic. I cannot believe how good the show is. Anyway, Chris, you had a chance to watch the new episode. What was your take on it? Oh, the theme of House of the Dragon is we can't have nice things. <laughs> we can't. I also, I just felt like full Jim Carrey's Grinch at one point where I was just like, you're still living? <laughs> what? How? I this know. is a great episode, though. There's so much fun stuff happening. And, and a big thing that this does that Game of Thrones didn't is certain atrocities we're front and center in Game of Thrones. And in this, we have taken a different lens. Mm. And I found that very, very interesting here. Um, one of the very opening scenes of this episode that we'll get into later on today um, when we do our open spoiler discussion. Um, the the child actors, you know, our grown up set of actors right. are wonderful in this. They're really, really great. I can see how the story transitioning to them is going to work. I was very concerned about that moving forward of, but I'm so invested in like Renera. That's, that's who I'm invested in. I don't give a shit about these kids, but now I do. And they did some really, really great stuff here. I'm interested to see how this all moves forward such a compelling thing once again stairs are the enemy of everyone i mean whew, great episode by the way um you know who is slowly turning into one of the most i mean when you look back at the very beginning of the show we should have seen it coming but somebody who's becoming one of the most important characters in the show and i never know how to pronounce her name it's not rainera it's Reina? Reina. Reina, the, yeah. The, 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 the queen, queen that wasn't. Never, yeah. The queen that never was. She's, you're realizing more and more, she's like the whole, like, she is oh my wonderful. gosh. She's playing the game well. She's, yeah. She, she's, she's trash. trash. She's what? Trash. Are you kidding? I it, stood up and cheered at a certain moment. She doesn't like Damon that much. There, there's two people that make me feel uneasy. It's her 
and the brother with the patch on his uh, on his. Well, he eye. doesn't just make you feel Damon, uneasy. Yeah. I he, feel those two make me very uncomfortable. They stress me out whenever they're on screen because <laughs> they stress me because <laughs> they are the big. I think they are the biggest threats to my two favorite characters so far, and it, it's I, I feel as if it's not just a threat to the throne, but like lives. Like I mean, lives. Like I think they're. Ah, uh, this this show is starting to become very stressful because of these two characters. <laughs> Wait, more oh. so than Allison? Welcome to the world Alice, of Game of Thrones. Allison, uh, I don't mind her only because I, just her for her history with having a being friends with uh, Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra. Like I, she she does, but the that lady, the the uh, you the queen that never was. Yeah, she's had be beef with uh, Rhaenyra from the very beginning right i mean they've had their well, little passive aggressive tension. moments i wouldn't say they've had beef i think there was tension. yeah it was just like okay wait a minute so i wasn't allowed to be the queen because i'm a woman but yet you're going to be able to be the queen i think it, it yeah it's not tension i think it's just sort of like a you know as the kiwis say a bit of a tall poppy syndrome yeah so yeah those I've two never heard that yeah phrase. i don't want to i i don't like the way i feel when those two are on screen. all right well let's maybe you might be honest and we'll see how that turns out question is for you guys what 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 happened? What what did we miss? Nothing. It's okay. I didn't have any opinions <laughs> just, about it. Oh, I'm Aaron. We I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. You I'm just, sorry, Aaron. It's just that you talk so much. I just assume. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Well, you said I, 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 I'll you condense comment. it. I'll condense it. I do no, have no, two please, thoughts. Please My please number do. one thought is if Patty Constantine, Constant, Constantine, Constantine, if Patty Constantine does not win an Emmy for his in incredible role in this it will be a tragedy yeah. if the makeup department does not win all of the awards for this it will be a tragedy and don't you tragedy. just love how damon goes from creepy predator uncle to like get my wife's name out of your mouth will smith saving the day and just like i i i he the the character arc that damon has had on this show is so beautiful to watch from a storytelling perspective and from an acting perspective um like i i loved last night's episode and one of the things also there is a third part not just holding on to the previous viewers getting back the viewers that game of thrones lost but also engaging new viewers Brand new audiences, i was just yeah. having a conversation with a friend of mine on the way to work today and she said you know i never saw game of thrones i said here's the beautiful thing you don't need to have seen Game of Thrones in order to start watching and fully enjoy House of the Dragon. I thought you were going to say you dropped her off at the next corner. <laughs> I did. I was like, get out of my car. Get out of my car. That's why she's not here with me on yeah. set. Um, but yes, thank you for letting me talk even more. <laughs> I, I, Something I should mention, too. Over the weekend, I did, like a, um, uh, I did a, a live stream this weekend, and one of the viewers asked me, what do you think the chances are over under 30% that Patty Constantine wins an Oscar or wins an Emmy? And I said, I would say he's only got like a 5% chance of even being nominated. Because while I love him in this show, I feel like he's being in a lot of the fans' eyes and viewers' eyes, he's being overshadowed by the things people like the character. But after watching last night's episode, I'm like, no, he won't be denied. So no. I, I don't know about Hand winning. him an Emmy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about him winning, but I... I would be shocked if he doesn't get nominated. Oh, for sure. At, at this point. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What did you think about the new episode of House of the Dragon? And once again, don't forget, we will be doing our open spoiler discussion after show a little bit later today at 3 p.m. Los Angeles time. We hope you guys will come back and join us then. All right. With that down, let's move into main topic number two. Aaron. What is our second main topic today? This comes to us from Clark Washington, who says, going into the weekend, it seemed Lyle Lyle Crocodile or Amsterdam would take the number one spot. Instead, Paramount's Smile, dropping a mere 22.2%, remained in the top spot with a 17,600,000 second, second, dollar second weekend gross. Meanwhile, Lyle, with a $50 million budget, grossed 11,500,000 opening weekend, while Amsterdam, with an $80 million budget, tanked with a six million dollar six million five hundred thousand dollar opening weekend what are your thoughts on this past weekend's box office results all right let's start off by talking about the positive thing here smile wow Whew. what a run this movie is having it, it is already percentage wise one of the most successful films of the year uh considering its budget to profit ratio it took the second smallest second weekend drop off of the year amazing with just a 22 percent drop off which means word of mouth went out 
Everybody wanted to go see it first weekend, start telling people. Now, listen, I'll, I'll be right front. I didn't love Smile, but I did like it. I thought it was good. But most people apparently are telling their friends about it because a lot of people went back to watch it again, took new people with them. And that second weekend result, incredibly impressive. And it takes number one at the box office again. Lyle, Lyle, Crocodile, I don't think anybody's really surprised. I think the big surprising thing coming out of that is that we're hearing it's actually pretty good. A number of people are saying it's not bad, um, which is good to hear. I have no intention of watching it, but still, that's good to hear. But still, you know, did not make any money, unfortunately. Amsterdam. Oh, Amsterdam. I mean, I think it's a victim of a couple of things. Number one, the first trailer I thought was great for a first trailer. Because the first trailer doesn't really need to tell you much. It just get, needs to give you a feel for the movie, show you the stars, all that kind of stuff. The problem was that as the marketing campaign progressed, the trailer, the second and third trailers never did really tell us what the movie was about. And so I think a lot of people just saw the trailers like, okay, this looks interesting, but I have no idea what this movie is. And a lot of people just decided to skip on it. And that's unfortunate because you got this thing. And then, of course, it didn't help that a couple of weeks ago, we started to hear that the movie wasn't very good. A lot of people took that to heart. And it is one of the biggest flops right next to Bros. One of the biggest flops, if not more so, because this was more expensive movie than Bros was. So that's incredibly disappointing, especially when you're talking about Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, John David Washington, Rami Malek, Chris Rock. I mean, on and on and on and on. So it's, it is unfortunate, but I think this is another case where you chuck it up to a really bad marketing campaign with bad reviews coming out. Then, of course, there's the ongoing drama of Bros, uh, which dropped all the way to eighth place uh, this weekend. Uh, and, you know, I've got, a, I've got a theory about this, and I think I might have mentioned this the other day, but I was one of these people, I'll take me as the case study. I was one of these people that... I was not interested in bros just because I didn't think the trailers looked funny at all. Uh, we saw the previews for it at CinemaCon. I'm just like, it just didn't make me laugh. Not, nothing about it looked funny. But then we started hearing from a lot of people that it is great. I mean, you're talking about an audience rating and a critic rating that are both in the 90% 90, 90, uh, range, which is incredible for a movie to get both audience and critic scores that high. Sounds fantastic. So then I start to plan and go to see it. Here's the problem. In the time since the first weekend came out, Billy Eichner, who I am a big fan of, decided to start blasting on social media that it, he started out throwing out blame about why the movie didn't do well. And none of the blame was po pointed at himself or the studio or the distributor. No blame about, hey, we just put out really terrible trailers that nobody thought made this movie look funny. Didn't blame it on, hey, we had nobody in this movie that the general movie going on would recognize. Not blaming that. They decided, he decided to blame straight America for not coming out to support it. To which my favorite line I've heard in response to that was Taylor saying, dude, gay America didn't turn out to support this movie. And that, I'm not, I did, for me as a viewer who wasn't interested in the movie, then became interested in the movie, suddenly that turned me off. And then another star from the movie came out and decided to go double barrel blast on Brennan Fraser for being in the whale. What? Oh yeah, you didn't read about that? Yeah, well, like one of the one of the actors in in that decided to come out and and go whole hog and start attacking Brendan Fraser for for getting the role in the in the whale because he's not that fat and he's not gay. Because Brendan Fraser is gay. And and I'm just hearing about this and I'm just like, I wonder. Allegedly not gay. Uh, allegedly, yeah, Madonna <laughs> just came out yesterday, yeah. and so allegedly, so you never know. You never know. But I there's think still time. A lot of people. I, I'm just wondering if a lot of people might have been like me, where it's like, okay, the movie didn't look like it was going to be all that interesting to me, but then we heard great things. Look at what happened to Smile. My right? great word got out about it. Had a really good second weekend, and I can't help but wonder if maybe a lot of people were like me, where it's like, we heard amazing things, like. Taylor, you saw it. Uh, Chris, you went to go see it. Mm -hmm. You guys loved it. Bros was amazing. Yeah, I right. Cried. Everybody's saying it's great. We cried. But it's really weird to me that they're pulling out all the stops. They even dusted off Madonna and made her come out of the closet to promote this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Like the likes they went to this, right? So, like everybody was saying it's amazing. So, I wonder if there'd be a lot of people like me who were not initially interested in seeing it and then hearing all these amazing things about it because apparently they made a great movie mm -hmm. that might have then got turned off by all this the public talky talky that people are doing. Cause now listen, I'm not, I didn't make a conscious choice to then say, well, I'm not going to go see bros. 
I just realized that all the interest that built up in me suddenly all drained out. Mm -hmm. And that's a shame. And, 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 and it's unfortunate that this might be a situation where people involved in a movie are sabotaging their own movie. And it's unfortunate, especially since we're hearing the movie is so good. But again, let's focus on the positive here. Smile this again, Blumhouse does it again. A movie that apparently they made for pocket change and bus fare comes out and is gonna probably cross the $100 million mark, which is crazy. Anyway, Aaron, you saw the weekend box office numbers. What, what uh, from Lyle, Lyle, Amsterdam, Smile, what story here stood out to you the most? You know, in the immortal words of LL Cool J, don't call it a comeback. Paramount's been here for years. Yeah, another you know, for Paramount. We saw what, oh, well, we those who were paying attention saw what happened after, you know, it, it, Brad Gray was running Paramount. And then in the early aughts, they had, or the, excuse me, the, the late aughts, the like around 2007, Paramount really ran into, um, excuse me, been, it had some success with the Mission Impossibles and the paranormal activity. And I feel like this is kind of a reminiscent of that period where they've got their big tent hole in the top, in top gun, at the tent pole, not tent hole, tent pole in top gun. <laughs> The Whoa. tent hole where you do where you, you smoke usually the Chris chicken. First. I was still processing my thoughts. Um, they have their big tent pole movie like Top Gun, or in that case, it was the Mission Impossible franchise. And then they have their you know uh, micro budget horror film. In that case, it was Paranormal Activity. In this case, it's now Smile. But in the teens, you know, under Brad Gray's leadership, they started, and also with Viacom, who decided that instead of investing more money into the films and into the products, they wanted to just shift all that profit back to the shareholders, we now see the response of that. And in the in 2016, 2017, Paramount was really in big trouble. They had one of the biggest flops of all time in Ben-Hur. Um, and they had uh, also um, uh, Zoolander 2, massive flop. They yeah. had flop after flop after flop. So they brought in uh, Jim Giapoulos, Jim, Gia, uh, Jim, Jim G as he was lovingly called. And the guy really turned it around by um, looking at the Disney model and going, okay, what are you guys doing? And let's try to figure out how to do something similar to that. And so under his leadership, which has now been taken over by uh, Robbins, I believe Jim Robbins, um, somebody Robbins who came over from Nickelodeon, you know, Jim G really has spent the last 10 years resurrecting Paramount. And even though he's no longer with the company, you got to give credit where credit is due because he only left last year. So a lot of these things were in play, uh, you know, in development. Well, listen at Paramount. This, some of the Paramount this year. Top Gun Maverick, The Lost City, Scream, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and, and now Smile. It's It's been a big series of wins for them this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's really a testament to reinvesting money into the quality, not necessarily reinvesting the money back into the shareholders who are just going to build a new deck. They don't care about the quality of the films. They don't care about the creativity. And that's what happens when you have creative people making decisions and not just suit wearing bean counters. You have people that come back and they and, and that's what I'm hoping is going to happen with all the changes that we're seeing at um um oh gosh we, warner brothers warner brothers i'm hoping that we're going to see a lot more of that money funneled back into creative i don't know if that's going to happen only time will tell but i'm thrilled for what's happening at paramount if you've ever had a chance to go to the paramount lot and take a studio tour it's one of the best it really is a magical yes. place and there's a reason that studio has been you know in existence for now more than a hundred years chris we see like Again, Lyle, Lyle, Amsterdam, smile, a mm. whole bunch of stories here. Which story stands out to you the most here? I mean, Amsterdam tanking is very interesting it's to me. It's really unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. But also, I mean, David O. Russell has not had a great track record with the public eye and his treatment of performers. Mm. And this was supposed to be this kind of comeback, you know, revitalizing his career, putting some of those rumors and some of that nastiness to bay. And people aren't coming in theaters to see this. The trailers make this... Uh, the narrative of this film very muddled. I have no idea what this is supposed to be about based on the trailers, yeah. right? Of just, it's three friends and there's a mystery. And, oh, Taylor Swift, neat, okay. You know, so that's a whole issue. And and I do think it's very, very interesting because I, I know a lot of your average moviegoer 
probably doesn't know about a lot of the David O. Russell drama, but all of my industry friends have been like, I don't want to go see his new movie. No, screw that guy, which I think has been very, very interesting. And when you have a out. budget like that, probably yep. overinflated because of the number of stars, it really exactly. reminds us that it doesn't take star power to make a great film. It's storytelling, right? It's good storytelling. I also, just to piggyback off of what Aaron was saying, this is such a tremendous year for Paramount, and I really feel like, yay, yay smile. I'm, I'm not a horror movie person, but it's spooky season, so of course these movies are going to do well and it's great that it's got legs i'm wondering if this is going to change the trajectory of their other releases though because pet cemetery wasn't that supposed to be straight to streaming um i think pet cemetery was supposed to be good i think that's <laughs> i think that was the main yeah, yeah. But I, mean, yeah. I, think, that I think that a couple different things though they think i think some of the things that they set to do on online are going to change up now because they they can take some risks i think and i think a lot of their let's go straight to paramount plus model things i think now they'll have a little wiggle room to go you know what why don't we try doing a theatrical release why don't we see how that goes because like you were saying a lot of these films were made for basically pennies on the dollar might as well put it in a theater and see how it goes since they're having a banger year mm -hmm. all right guys question is for you what do you think about the box yeah. office results this weekend a lot of interesting stories in there what stood out to you the most whatever your thoughts are jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there all right guys it's game time. We're going to play a little game here, and one of our channel members is going to stand to win a pop that's on Aaron's desk right now, an autographed pop of Dr. Fate. We will send that out, but before we get to our game and we tell you what it is, we're going to take a second and thank another sponsor of today's video, our friends at Raycon. Hey guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Now you guys know I've been using Raycon as a part of my morning routine for a long time now. I love getting up, getting on my treadmill, pulling out my iPad and watching my favorite tech YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips, another good Canadian kid by the way. And my Raycon wireless earbuds come through for me every time. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips with the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, my Raycons give me eight hours of play time and a 32 hour battery life. And one of the best things about Raycons is that they are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycons everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. And when I'm on my treadmill, the earbud tap functions help me stay hands-free and the noise isolation is fantastic. So guys, go to buyraycon.com today and use the promo code Campia15 to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's code Campia15 at buyraycon.com to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com, code Campia15. And thank you to our friends at Raycon for giving me such great sound quality when I'm on my treadmill in the morning and for sponsoring this episode of the John Campia Show. All right, guys. It's game time here, and we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to try a new game, kind of inspired. By inspired, I mean totally rip off. But a game show Anne's been watching on TV. You know, Anne's been watching the show uh, Password, which is pretty fun. So I thought we would do our own version of it called Movie Password. And we have three contestants today. We, of course, have Chris Carr. We have Aaron Cummings. And... Ray Aura, who has won the most games since we started playing games here again. <laughs> and here's how it's going to work. Each one of our contestants here will be representing one of our channel members who stand to win this autograph Funko Pop. And our channel members are uh, Baylor Girl is being represented by Aaron. Oh, good. I want her. Edward <laughs> Marcin is being represented by Chris Carr. Sorry, Edward. And Scott <laughs> Collins is being represented by Ray Ora. Congrats, Scott. Oh, no, sorry. Congratulations now, on your award, Scott. went to Baylor. If your contestant wins, you will be receiving one. You will be receiving our autograph Funko Pop. Okay, so here's how the game is going to be played for Movie Password. You guys will see what the actual word is. I will give a clue to the first contestant. If they guess the word, they get six points. If they don't, we give another clue to the next contestant. If they get it, they get five points and so on and so forth until somebody gets it. We will put the word up on screen for you guys to see so you can see what the word is they're trying to guess. But if you want to play along, just turn away from your monitor or turn your monitor off so you can play along. All right, that down, let's get into it. And our first contestant is going to be Chris. And we're going to start off with this. Okay. For you guys at home, here's our word for our movie word, if you will. And by the way, it's got to be a movie title, character, actor, theme, whatever from movies. All right. So our first clue 
is fetch. Three, two, Super one. pets. No, super pets is not it. All right, the first clue was fetch. So we'll go over to Aaron now. For five points, your second clue is Lohan. Oh. Three. Lindsay? Lohan? Nope. So, all right, we go over now to Ray, who will get a third clue. <laughs> and if he gets it, it'll be worth four points. Ray, the first clue was fetch. The second clue was Lohan. Your third clue is cruel. Mean Girls. Mean Girls! So mean. Yeah. Ah! Ah. Ray gets four points. Yeah. And Stop trying to make fetch a thing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Ray gets four Man. points and oh my shoots God, so into the lead. So angry with myself. Okay. Let us move on now to secret word number two or secret movie theme number two. All right. It is now up on the screen. And we will start with Aaron this time for six points. Aliens. Sigourney Weaver. For six points. Yeah. Oh, Baylor girl. Girl. girl, right here. <laughs> sorry, everyone wearing headphones. I'm so sorry. They hate me right now. All right. You, you know what's funny? Before the show started, Taylor oh, brought up, you know, we were celebrating Sigourney Weaver's birthday the other day. And I'm like, oh, no, now someone's going to remember yeah. that. And oh, all exactly. right. No, I mean, I have a Sigourney Weaver from Aliens doll. So, well, she so six points. Aaron shoots into the lead. All right. <laughs> Let's go on to um, number three. Question number three, all right? And Ray is up first this time. Your clue word is force. Three. Star Wars. No, the answer is not Star Wars. All right, we go over to now Chris for five points. The first clue was force. Mm -hmm. Your second clue is user. Daisy Ridley. No. Okay, now we go over to Chris. Or we go over to Aaron now. For four points, the first clue was force. Second uh, clue was user. Your third clue is guardians. Three. Jedis? Jedi? Jedi is the word, yes. Oh my for God. four points. Cleaning house. Sailor girl, we're picking this <laughs> home. Sailor girl. girl. <laughs> You. So what is All that, right. 10 now for Aaron? <clears throat> so what's the scores now? Um, <clears throat> I normally don't do math. I just bat my eyes. But I think Chris is at zero. Yep. Uh, I think Aaron is at 10. Yeah. And I think Ray is at four. Five. Five. No, no, no four. 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 Ray's at four. Wait, All right. No, no, you're right. So we're, through, no, you're right. we're halfway through now. Still a lot of points to be given out here. So there's three more questions <laughs> to go. All right, let's move on to number four here. And we're starting off with Chris. Oh, Edward, I'm so sorry. All right. Your first clue is maids maids three two one clue two. no i don't know it is not clue all right now we move over to aaron for five more points your clue is viola five four the help the help for God, five God. points <laughs> <laughs> Our neighbors below us are like, what the What the hell, hell is going on? Baylor girl, we're banging this. Oh. All right. So what is that? Is that five points? That's five oh, points. 15. She goes to Baylor. We've got the Lord on our side. All right. Only Ray can, can catch you now, I think. Only Ray. All right. <laughs> is question on five. <laughs> and we move now on to question five. And Aaron, we're starting with you. For six points and to seal the win... Your clue is bondage. There's so many. Three. Eyes wide shut? No, eyes wide shut is not the answer. All right. Ray, we go over to you now for five points. The first clue was bondage. Oh, yeah. Great clue. The second clue <laughs> is color. Oh, 50 Shades of Grey. 50 Shades of yeah! Grey for five points. <laughs> My favorite series. <laughs> <laughs> because he read the books. He read the he books. Read all so, the books. So what is that? He got five then. All right. So unfortunately, Chris is at zero. <laughs> Aaron bad. is at 15. And Ray is in second place with nine points. All right. So here we go. Ray can still tie this thing up. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to start off with Chris on the. No, we're starting oh, off with Ray. Ray. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Ray, if you get this, you tie Aaron. Oh my God, it's so <laughs> nerve wracking. And let's now get into our final one. Oh, shoot. Why? And well, you get the first clue. This, okay. Here we go, Ray. No pressure. Your clue is animals. <laughs> That's it? Yep, animals is your clue. Three, two, uh, Muppets. one. What did you say? The Muppets. No, the Muppets oh. is not the answer. Yeah, I lost. All right. Chris, mm -hmm. to get on the scoreboard. No, I won't. Your second clue mm -hmm. is animation. Oh, son of a bitch. No, that is not. No. <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. The classic animation. Three. Wait. It, two, uh huh? What? One. Sing? Oh, God. No. <laughs> it is not sing. All right. I know it. We oh, go over God. to Aaron. For four points. Like she needs them. Your clue is hops. I know it. <gasps> I knew it, man. I wanted to three, two, super pets. No, Let it's not super oh, pets. Wait. Zootopia. Oh. All right, Ray, it is up to you, and you answer is <laughs> Zootopia. For Ray six gets points. three points. <laughs> so Ray with three points. What does that make our final score? Well, <clears throat> would you believe that Chris has zero points? Wow. <laughs> Second place is Ray with 12 points. We can't points. even add our points to beat Aaron. And Aaron in first place with 15 points. And our winner of our inaugural hey, 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 movie right. password game is Aaron, and you were representing Baylor Girl. Man, I knew. So I'm going to have probably Taylor uh, probably get in touch with you, Baylor Girl. We'll figure out uh, shipping addresses, and you will be getting, hold that up again. You will be getting our autographed Fungo Pop of Dr. Fade. All of us in the crew here autographed it for you. We'll be sending that out to you. So yeah, guys, hey, listen, let me know. What did you think about the game? And Taylor, if we can get the monitor turned back on. Oh, yeah. What did you guys think about the game? Did you enjoy it? Should we do it again or stick with over under? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comments and let us know. Which and game should we do so Chris too, always loses? <laughs> 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 Why don't you think Muppets? You did you really it? well though, right? No, I, mean, but, I, I but, can't but, believe... What my was second the one choice was Zootopia, which sucked, and I knew I, I felt always. So Chris, dumb. I thought you had it because you're like, "Oh, I know this," and I was like, "Oh yeah, she's going to get Zootopia." As, as, like, you were I just talking about was in trouble. As soon as I said aliens, it's like Sigourney Weaver. I'm yeah, like, damn. Oh, well, there we go. All right, with that down, guys, let's now move into main topic number three. <clears throat> uh, Aaron. What is our third main topic today? Our third main topic comes to us from James Rell. Hey there, John. Deadline's reporting that smoke show Tom Welling will have a recurring role as Samuel Campbell, Mary Campbell's father in the Winchesters, the CW series. It'll be interesting to see him in the world of Supernatural. What are your thoughts on this? Also, thanks for how you remind me that you're Canadian. You're welcome. And it's funny. I didn't read the word smoke show in the email. Oh, like, I'm was sorry. Was that commentary? It, it says it on mine. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty it pretty says sure it's smoke there. Smoke show, Tom. Oh, I wasn't wearing my glasses. No, it just says uh, smoking hot man meat Tom Welling. That's exactly what James wrote. Okay. Yeah. So here's an interesting thing. I don't know if there's a worse looking upcoming show than the Winchesters. <laughs> that show looks awful. And I say this as a massive fan of Supernatural. But adding Tom Welling to it, who is, by the way, he is CW royalty. Oh, yeah. Like, like he, Tom Welling, CW royalty. I mean, he was, for the longest time before Supernatural, when you think CW, unless you're, you know, somebody who liked uh, Gossip Girl, you instantly thought Smallville. And when they brought Tom Welling onto Lucifer... He was, he was so great. great in Lucifer. And now apparently they have added him to the new Winchester show. This comes to us from the folks over at Screen Rant who write the following. The Winchesters has added Tom Welling to the cast as Sam and Dean's grandfather, Samuel Campbell. Taking place in the 1970s, the Winchesters will follow supernatural protagonists, Sam and Dean's parents, John Winchester and Mary Campbell as they embark on their fateful relationship and hunt monsters. Mitch Pelegi, I hope I'm saying his name right, previously played the role of Mary's father in Supernatural seasons four and six. Though Samuel was originally killed by the yellow-eyed demon Azazel, played by Fredrick Lenny, in 1973, he was resurrected to the 21st century by the demon Crowley, who was, by the way, one of my favorite characters so on TV, good. played by Mark Shepard, and spent some time hunting with Sam Jared Pelegi. That comes to us from Screen Rant. All right, listen. Tell you what, again, I think this is 
my least anticipated upcoming TV show. The trailers look like absolute trash. But if you want to get my attention, you just got it. Adding Tom Welling to this, to me, is a really smart move. Again, the dude is already CW royalty. I went from zero interest in this show to at least a little bit of interest now. I, I'm going to want to check this out and see what kind of role he plays in this. So mark me down as thinking this is a pretty good move on their part. Anyway, Chris, you saw the story. What do you think of Tom Welling joining Supernatural's spinoff, The Winchesters? Oh, I love this. I think one of the, the highlights of the DC crossover events was having Tom Welling come back and be Superman again. You know, yeah. I love him and everything. He was great on Lucifer. Yeah. It's wild to me that he has only got 16 acting credits on IMDb. Like that's bananas. He's still and, connecting well, royalty checks. Well, when, when you're or starring on a show or, for 20 well, was years, say, <laughs> yeah, it's because you know he's on there from I think 2000 and like one to 2017 or something like that is the runtime for Smallville. It was something incredibly long, but it's just so interesting to think of somebody who's part of like my childhood and part of like my pop culture zeitgeist hasn't been in that many different properties. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. I would love to see him in this, and it does make me more interested because those trailers we initially saw for Winchester's does not look promising. Not and as good. of right now, I was like, I'll watch it for the five seconds I get to see Jensen Eccles read from a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, Aaron, you see this news. Uh, what do you think of Man Meat uh, joining the Winchester's? Well, first of all, uh, in the chat, Bird Hop, thinks that Tom Welling is my Tom husband. Oh, no, And I'm no, just going to go ahead and, guy. no, 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 we're going to go with that. So my Tom <laughs> husband will totally understand if I am just letting everyone believe that I'm married to Tom Welling, who I actually saw. I was out for a walk one time and uh, he was in his garage. And let me tell you, I don't say smoke show for nothing. The man is very attractive. Was he also wearing a Lord of the Rings shirt? It was so <laughs> embarrassing because I was actually wearing a Smallville shirt. And I was like, I promise I'm not a fan. <laughs> Can I come in your garage and play with you? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I answer. Hmm? No, no, just continue. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I you, absolutely. There is nothing wrong, as you say, with adding talent and specifically adding talent and a recognizable name who has been a fixture in a network who really helped, uh, you know, put a network on the map like CW. Because remember, this was not long after and this may have been mid transition from uh, those uh, old timers like me will remember when the CW was actually a little network called the WB. Yeah. And it made its transition over to being called the CW. A lot of shows didn't make it. Um, super, uh, excuse me. Smallville was one of the shows that you know really was your. I, I forgot. Forgive me for the, forgetting the name. Your little witchy witchy show was that on the Charmed? WB? That's right. Was Charmed on WB? The WB. Otherwise known yeah. as your little witchy witchy show. The also little witchy witchy, little witchy show. Witchy yes, show. where I, I okay. Rose McGowan and I, I played the demonic alter ego to her, and like we morphed into each other and threw fireballs, and she was awesome. Um, yes, I was on Charmed. It was my it was my first big guest star role, and yes, it was on the WB. But I think this is a wonderful move for the part of of the CW. I hope that they are backing up the money truck to him because let's face it, he doesn't really need to do it for the money. Um, he's got projects that he's currently working on right now. It's not like he can't find another job. And he, and, and I think that adding him to this is only going to elevate the property, which as you said, is kind of struggling. So um, I auditioned for the mom on that show, by the way, um, didn't get the part, but that's okay. Clearly, they cast someone who was much more appropriate and they now are moving into casting someone who's not only appropriate for the show because it's on the right network and it's in the right genre, but is also going to hopefully elevate the show and get them the eyeballs that they're needing. And I just hope that they give him the material that he can really have fun with and sink his teeth into. And uh, and and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now intrigued about this show. All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? CW royalty, Tom Welling, has joined the new CW show, The Winchesters, a spinoff from Supernatural. I'm not going to pretend I'm excited about the show. I'm still not. But at least having him on there makes me at least a little bit interested. How do you guys feel about that? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, let's get into main topic number four. Aaron. What is our fourth main topic today? Our fourth main topic comes to us from Morris Haddock. Good greetings, everyone. Oh my God. Did you guys have a chance to see Werewolf by Night? I'm oh, honestly that's, blown away. That's not the, uh, that is not the question. But also, unfortunately, yeah. I, <laughs> yes, that is the wrong one. So let me read the right one. Is it from Aiden T? 
Um, Best topic. I'm not sure. Hold on a second. It is from. I have it here on my computer. Don't want to bring it to you. I don't think you have it there on your computer. I got Greg from Morris Greg Greg. Did I not? I think I emailed it to you, Ray. Did I? Yeah, not? yeah, but you. I think you only emailed it to me. So I'll read it. I d okay, go ahead. Okay, Ray, you read so it. Greg writes, "Hey guys, other than Picard season one and Strange New Worlds, I haven't been a huge fan of the Star Trek stuff we've gotten on Paramount Plus. But then I saw the Picard season three trailer that they released out of New York Comic Con, and it got me excited." I watched Next Generation a lot growing up, and seeing all these faces returning gave me all the feels. And how about L O R? I don't know. Lore. Lore. What did you guys think of the trailer? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And yes, so Picard season three has been coming, and everybody's been buzzing about it because they are, it's basically a Star Trek The Next Generation reunion show. Yeah. Bon are most of the other cast that have been a part of the Picard series up until this point except for the one who plays like his hot-headed... Uh, Raffi. Raffi, right. Mm -hmm. She's clearly back, but and, and Seven of Nine is back as well. So, I mean, there's that, but all the other cast that were there seem to be gone, and it is truly a Next Generation reunion show. This comes to us from the folks over at IndieWire who wrote the following. Final Frontier, Final Voyage. Patrick Stewart's Jean-Luc Picard is flying into the sunset at warp speed with Star Trek Picard Season 3 a last hurrah for him and the Next Generation cast that's intended to bring his story to a close. Season 3 is going to be a largely starship-set adventure reminiscent of the tone and feel of Next Generation. In addition to bringing back cast members LeVar Burton, Michael Dorn, and Gates McFadden, as well as Jonathan Frakes and Marina uh, Sirtis, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right, who had already appeared in Season 1. So this is a return. They're coming back now. Data, they already killed off again. Uh, in a previous season of Picard, and now they've brought back his twin brother from the original series, Lore. So you see him pop up, and that's interesting. Seeing Michael Dorn Wharf with the white beard and hair and goatee, that actually looks pretty cool. And listen, I gotta tell you what, I agree with you. Seeing all of them back on screen together did kind of give me the feels as well, because I remember when I was younger watching The Next Generation, and it, it was a pivotal show. And here's the thing. I loved Picard season one. I thought it was great. I wasn't so big on Picard season two, to be honest with you, even though the Q angle was pretty neat. I, it wasn't great. But I've heard this one is wonderful. Our own Robert Meyer Burnett, who is very skeptical of new Star Trek, has seen Picard season three, and he says it's fantastic. John, it's the best modern Star Trek I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I believe that was him. It's, actually, I thought he I was, was in the room for a him. second. I thought you were possessed Ooh. by him for a second. I mean... So, I got the creeps just sitting next to you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love Rob. I love I love him. I totally say that in jest. Um, so I'm hearing great things about, again, it's a first trailer. I mean, they gave us a little tease before, but this is the first trailer, so we don't have a lot of information. First trailers aren't necessarily meant to give us a lot of information. The show's not coming out till February. So we'll get more a little bit later. But I got to tell you what, I thought for a first trailer... I thought it was pretty banging. I loved it. Anyway, Chris, mm -hmm. you saw the first trailer. What did you think? Oh, I love this. TNG was my gateway drug into Star Trek. My dad's a huge Trekkie, and so this is the show that he would sit me down to watch with him and like give me backstory on all the lore and everything. So I'm really excited about this. As a kid, I thought Gates McFadden was like the most beautiful human being ever and so smart. So to have Dr. Beverly Crusher back, yes! I'm hyped for it. And I'm really interested to see what they're doing with lore. I think that's going to be fun because his arc in TNG was really interesting of having like the different personality yeah. and being a little, a little sneaky, a little evil. So this is going to be fun. Um, I am like you. I didn't really love season two. I thought there were a lot of missteps in that one. So I am excited to see this kind of almost fire sale that they did at the very end, right? Of, hey, and this story is done. Now we're going to move over here. I'm excited to see what happens in season three. Aaron, I can't. I don't know if you were a big viewer of Next Generation when you were younger or anything, but what did you think about the new trailer? I have no opinion about this. <laughs> Just that simple. You're not really a big Star Trek person. But you were on it's Star Tom, Trek, weren't you? You were on. That's right. You were on Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting about that. I was prostitute number one on yeah. the Carpenter Street episode of Star Trek Enterprise. Yes. Um, but uh, no, I mean, we're just we're we're not a Trek house. That's OK. Not yeah. everybody has to be. Exactly. Well, guys, question is for you. Are you a Trek house? Did you see the new trailer for Star Trek Picard season three? What did you think about the previous seasons? Are you looking forward to the new one? Where are your expectations right now? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. Okay, guys, 
With that down, we're going to take a second here and thank another sponsor of today's show. I love them dearly because they feed me. Our friends at (laughs) HelloFresh. We want to take a moment and thank a sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Guys, my wife Ann and I love using HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. When you subscribe to HelloFresh, you can check save money off of your fall to-do list. HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout and even less expensive than grocery shopping shopping too. And HelloFresh works with your ever-changing schedule. Plans are flexible and you can choose your meals for the week, update your preferences, or change your delivery day all in the HelloFresh app. Now you know Ann and I are both working professionals, so when it comes to dinner time, it can be a bit of a challenge. We don't really have time to cook and we don't want to eat out all the time. And that's why HelloFresh comes through so clutch for us. Not only do we get to eat delicious, nutritious food, but Ann and I both have a lot of fun getting to cook together, following the easy-to-follow steps and getting the meals made. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia65 and use the code Campia65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Campia65 using the code Campia65 for 65% off plus free shipping. And thank you to our friends at HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. Guys, remember, when you support our sponsors, you're actually supporting us. So go on down to the description of the video, and right at the top, you'll see links to all of our sponsors and the promo codes. And thank you again to HelloFresh. I I do highly recommend you use them, guys. They're a lot of fun, and it makes it a lot really more convenient. All right. With that down, let's move on to main topic number five. Aaron. What is our fifth main topic today? This question is from Aiden T. Can someone help me understand why? If they knew that they were going to do a season two of Rings of Power, no matter what, they didn't start shooting the second season until a week or so ago when they know it's just going to take them years to complete it. I just read on Screen Rant that the showrunners are saying season two is still years away. Huh? You can't do a show and expect to keep your audience interested if you're only putting out a season every two or three years. I know some shows have had long breaks, but they're not doing themselves any favors. <laughs> what do you guys think of this? All right, Aiden, thanks a lot for saying that in. And yeah, listen, it's funny. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power has been an interesting journey for me because I almost ditched on the show after the first episode. I mean, quite frankly, this show had a really slow start. And there's a difference between slow burn and slow. This was slow. It wasn't a slow burn. It's gotten better. Like every episode got a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit better. Episode four is the first one I I could say I quite enjoyed. Episode five, I really liked a lot. Episode six, I loved. The last episode was a little bit of a step backwards. It was still really intriguing, waiting for me to see where things go. But you're right. Word just came out. Then we knew they were going to do a second season. But I just assumed this second season would come next year. But apparently, they're saying this season is actually going to be years away. This comes to us from the folks at Screen Rant who wrote the following. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Season 2 may still be several years away, even though production on the sequel on the prequel series should be speeding up. For those already anticipating The Rings of Power's return, showrunner McKay teases when it may happen. McKay shared an estimated timeline for Season 2's debut with The Hollywood Reporter while giving a behind-the-scenes look at the production, revealing that it may take, quote-unquote, another couple of years. Naturally, production speeds uh, for the following seasons of The Rings of Power will be quicker than Season 1's because the crew has a base to work with. But the show's epic scale will still take time to create. The Rings of Power has set a high bar for itself with record-breaking viewership for Season 1. So, Season 2 will need to find a way to not only maintain that audience, but also expand it. All right. I am perplexed by this. Because, listen, I I understand why a lot of movies don't shoot movies back to back because you don't know how the first one's going to do. You want to kind of hedge your bets a little bit. I get it. And sometimes when you know you have a successful franchise, then you do shoot back to back. And we've seen situations that I am perplexed by this for a couple of reasons. Smaller reason is that this show is just starting to find its footing. In my opinion, it took them five, six episodes to do it, but it's finally started to find its footing to come to the conclusion. The next episode's the finale. And then find out we're going to have to wait a couple of years to get the next season? I, I, I'm sorry. Your show is not Breaking Bad. Mm. It, it's not like 
a lot of people are going to be selling. Like you just, I, in my personal opinion, it's all subjective. They have just finally started getting good. You can't, I'm going to lose a lot of interest between now and whatever. I mean, you might deliver the most banging season finale in the history of TV. Okay, maybe, but let's assume that's not the case. That's, that's a bad, that's a bad move. Then taking us, you're finally getting us on board with it. And now we're going to have to wait a couple of years. But here's the other reason why I think this is perplexing to me. With the sheer amount of money that they have spent on this series, we have said this before on this show, them doing a season two and three was a foregone conclusion. I mean, season one, it's had record-breaking numbers, but let's say it was an unmitigated flop. Even if it had the lowest viewership of any TV show in history, they were still going to do seasons two and three. Knowing that, why did you not just shoot this like Peter Jackson shot the original movies? Like when you know you're doing all three movies, just sh shoot it all at once. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you got to take little breaks for some post-production, everything, but they just shot that whole thing at once. Why did production ever stop? Like if you know you're doing seasons two and three and you know that's a foregone conclusion, I mean, maybe you don't do all five like you're planning if the thing is a flop, but it's been a hit. Great. Why did production ever cease? Why did they just start going this? I have, I am completely perplexed by this. From a business point of view, this is asinine. Th this is seriously, somebody needs to be fired over this. Like you, it's an automatic, we're doing season two. Great, you would save yourself time, money, logistics, if you just planned it all as one big long shoot and you wouldn't have to make your potential audience sit around for a couple of years with our thumbs up our asses while we're waiting for this show that we've just started to get into. Don't judge how I watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. You do your thing, I have mine. We all got our thing. It's all good. But I, I, again, for me, this is, I, I'm, I don't know what to say. Like this, this seems like such a no brainer. Again, if it were ever in question about whether or not they were going to do a season two, I would understand that. <clears throat> but they didn't spend $700 million to not at least follow it up with season two. Everybody's known that from day one. So I, I got to say, I'm with them on this, Chris. This I find very confusing. This I find ineptitude. I mean, yeah. seriously, I didn't, you hear about the story. What do you think? I mean, do they think we're elves? <laughs> Do they think we're just going to give it that amount of time? And I Has it only been 20 years? No, oh my gosh, this is fine. I say this too as the biggest Rings of Power apologist probably on this channel. So much so that some of you have accused me of being paid by Amazon. I love you. That's so funny that you think I have money. <laughs> I say things about thumbs up my ass. They're not, they're not poaching me, you guys. I think this is a really big misstep. And maybe there were issues, right? It is difficult to shoot things long term because of COVID and everything. I, I could give them a little grace on this maybe. We've seen other shows successfully take long breaks. Atlanta, BBC Sherlock. But those shows had astounding critical acclaim behind them. Yeah. People were rabid for more of those things. Whereas, you know, Rings of Power has been pretty middling as far as people's reviews have gone of it. People have either been wildly into it, really hate it, or there's people who are pretty tepid in the middle, right? So I feel like this is a really, really bad choice, especially when we're finally getting some momentum in this show to just pull the e-brake. Seems like a really, really stupid decision. And Aaron, like as somebody who's been involved with a lot of TV shows and things like that, what do you think about this move on their part? It doesn't make any sense. And just to piggyback off of what my beautiful colleague said, oh. you know, with Atlanta, yeah. It, oh, you mean Chris? So, okay, sorry. Yeah, please continue. <laughs> yes, it. You know, Atlanta did have a hiatus. However, the thing about Atlanta is that that is a show that was conceived by and starring Donald Glover. And so, mm -hmm. in the hiatus, in those long breaks between seasons, you still have Donald Glover starring in movies, and that's the reason why there was a hiatus. Did, did, he, did season one even have a big hiatus between season one and season two? Sixteen months. Between season one and season two. Yes, and then it'll so be 32 months. Here. And then it'll be 32 months since season two ended. But again, Donald Glover is the driving force behind that. And it's also because of the way that the show is shot and the storyline, you don't necessarily have to follow the entire story. You can jump into season two for the first time. You know, and we've seen other shows, Mad Men, Sopranos. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, Game of Thrones, Stranger Things is the biggest recent culprit of it yeah. that have these long, you know, this long hiatus between 
between seasons. But a lot of times those are shows that build up their audience over seasons one, two, and three, and then they have their hiatus between maybe seasons four and five or before their final season or when they're really wanting to you know, figure out, okay, how are we going to wrap up all of these storylines into the most epic season finale? And every they know that people are going to come back for the season finale. So I don't think that they have... As you said, uh, my other beautiful co-host, John, <laughs> Jonathan Boycho. Thank you. Boycho, oh. Boychek, Jonathan. Um, it's one of those. <laughs> one of those. They have not built up a strong enough audience to validate the the weight in between seasons for people to want to continue the storyline. And then also, you're right, from a per, from a business point of view, it makes no sense. There's a term called block shooting, which is where unlike in a normal, you know, television shoot where you have eight days to shoot an episode and you shoot that episode and then you move to the next one. And if you were in, say, like the police station in episode one, then you go back to the police station in episode two. Block shooting is where you shoot numerous episodes at one time. It can get very very confusing because you're like, okay, in this scene, we're in episode four. And in this scene, we're in episode seven. However, that is the way to save money because at the end of a season, a lot of times these stages are rented out to other productions. So all those sets have to be torn down and they have to be rebuilt. You know, all of those costumes have to be put into storage somewhere and then they have to be pulled out. Actors, especially after the success of a first season, they get offers to do movies and then it's a puzzle of you know figuring out how everybody's going to come back together again and even if they are under a contract with the television show sometimes things just don't work out also tragedies happen sometimes an actor's just not available anymore for whatever reason and so it just doesn't make any sense to me especially knowing that they had this why they wouldn't go okay logistically even with COVID, especially with COVID, we have our entire cast and crew quarantined weekly testing we're not going to let them go on vacation and start traveling around the world and then come back with cooties so we're just going to go ahead and block shoot the first two seasons or even back to back shoot the first two seasons lock them in release the first season wait a couple months release the second season and then when you know that you've got that rabid fandom then you can you know take a little bit more time between seasons but it just really doesn't make any sense i don't know who made that decision or why uh, again, with a lot of the examples, too, about like some of the other big shows, some of them having hiatuses, very, very rarely, if ever, is it between season one and season no, two. Right, like, exactly. you got to get that ground, that, that groundswell going first. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this report coming out that they're saying that it's going to be a few years before Rings of Power even comes out again? Maybe you think that's no big deal. Maybe you think it is. Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to main topic number six. Aaron, what is our sixth main topic today? This comes to us from Jolly Man. Today at Walmart, I found Funko Pops depicting Shuri, Mbaku, and Nakia, all in Black Panther costumes. The image is attached. Is this proof that there will be multiple Black Panthers? What other explanation could there be? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in. Now, of course, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, is coming, our excitement level is going through the roof. I, I I can't believe how excited I am actually for this movie. If you had told me a year ago I was gonna be more excited for Wakanda Forever than Black Adam, I would have said probably not, because I mean, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's my guy, but I am, I that, that the trailer they put out for that thing was just so good. But the mystery, the question, who's Black Panther? Now, a lot of things have pointed towards that. It's pretty clearly going to be a mistake. It's going to be Shuri, uh, which it should <laughs> not be, but it looks like they're going in that direction. If anybody can make that work, Ryan Coogler will be able to make that work. But then I told you guys, I actually think Shuri might die in this movie and that we might see multiple Black Panthers. Then a couple of the stars of Black Panther 2, including Lupita Nyong'o, came out in an interview the other day, and we talked about this last week, that they're kind of laughing at the audience thinking they know who Black Panther is because they haven't gotten it all yet. Like no. nobody says gotten it all, which of course increases the speculation that we're going to see multiple Black Panthers in this movie. And now this, now some of you may have seen this before. This was new to me. Uh, this viewer of ours sent us, a Jolly Man sent us this picture. They were in a Walmart and they found this on the shelves. Again, of Shuri, Nakia, 
and the mighty M'Baku. 69. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, I knew somebody <laughs> would point that out. And the mighty M'Baku. Why is that now, number important, Jonathan? I do <laughs> want to point out that none of these figures are these characters in a Black Panther costume. And the blue label on the front, and I don't know, Jonathan, if you're able to zoom in on that. I, I don't know if you're going to yeah. be able to or not. But that little blue label on the front, right above the Walmart sticker on each box, is another little blue sticker that basically says, I believe, art series. So what I think we're looking at, rather than, there we go, rather than looking at three Black, co Black Panther costumes, we're looking at three characters in the movie in an artistic style, hence the, the sticker that says the art series. However, there is something very, very interesting about this. Notice how the only characters they have here are the three prime, char prime candidates to be the new Black Panther. Like I've always said, I don't think it should be Shuri. It should absolutely be M'Baku, and if not M'Baku, it should absolutely be Nakia. Mm -hmm. I mean, with their background, their experience, their combat, their warriors, like all that kind of stuff. I mean, Nakia was T'Challa's queen, M'Baku his closest ally, like both of which would kick the living snot out of Shuri. But still, our three prime candidates for the new Black Panther, these. Notice that we do not have, and I always forget um, the queen's name, but T'Challa's mother, I think is... Uh, Ramona? Ramona. Ramona or something, something like that. Anyway, so we don't see her. We don't see one of these art figures of, uh, uh, I almost said Nemo. All right, we don't see. <laughs> we definitely Namor. don't do that. Yeah, where's little, where's little the, Nemo's not in there. Where's Nemo? We don't see one of Namor. We don't see any of the other potential characters in the movie. We only see these three. Do I believe that these toys on the shelf right now uh, Ramonda, thank you guys in the live chat. Do I believe that these figures out on Walmart shelves now definitively make it clear that there are three, there are going to be multiple Black Panthers, probably all three of them Black Panther. No, I don't believe that these uh, toys definitively say that again because they're more art series. It's not them in Black Panther costumes. However, you look really close at the design. On each one of them, there is a little panther on every single one of them. So there's that. So do I think it definitively says this? No, I do not. Do I believe it gives a little bit more credibility to the idea that they're going to be multiple Black Panthers? Yeah, I do. I think it leans that way. I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's definitive, but I do think it's leaning that way. I think this suggests that there are multiple Black Panthers because it's the only three that are possible Black Panthers. Anyway, Chris, you saw these toys. Where are your thoughts right now on who Black Panther is going to be? Would there be multiples? And do you think these toys on shelves right now give us any more of an indication one way or the other? I mean, do they definitively do it? No. Do I like where it's going? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, we've seen this happen before, too, with toys being released, and they give us a little spoiler here and there, too. So I think there's some, some smoke around this, right? I can believe this. I understand why people think that Shuri is going to be Black Panther. You know, there's the precedent from the comics and everything. She is obviously part of the royal family. That all makes sense. However, Nakia and Baku make more sense to me. The, the person we see in the trailer, I feel like that's Nakia. That's what I thought. And Mbaku makes such, such sense to me of taking up the mantle and everything. Ultimately, I think this is all kind of moot because we are going to see T'Challa come back into the MCU. I think, I really think we're going to have that character resurrected. I think for this film, we just needed to, you know, pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman. I think that Ryan Coogler did what he thought was best for his cast and for the community moving forward who were so attached to their king. But as far as who's going to be Black Panther in this film, I think we're going to see him revolving. And I think it's going to end up being Nakia, personally. Uh, I think I think at the end of the day, I, I'm just wild guess speculation. I mm -hmm. may change my mind later. I think it's going to be Mbaku. Now, listen, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people, including right now in the live chat, our our, our good friend and one of our viewers, Hoser uh, Hoser Miez, right? And I've seen a lot of people say this too. Mbaku can't be Black Panther because he worships the ape god. It doesn't matter. You become, you get the powers of the Black Panther by taking the heart shaped herb. Because guess what? Killmonger didn't worship Bost. Right? He didn't worship the ape god, but he didn't worship Bost either. But he just because he took the heart-shaped herb, that gave him the power. 
So it does not matter. He's still Wakandan. He is the leader of the of the Jambari tribe. Yeah. He's he can be it. And just because he doesn't worship the same God as the that just because his tribe of the Wakandans don't worship the same God as the other tribes of the Wakanda does, it makes no difference whatsoever because it's all about the heart shaped herb. Yeah. Anyway, Aaron, you see these toys. Do you think we have any indication here about who or how many Black Panthers we're gonna have? I find it hard to believe that a secret this big that has been kept so tight under wraps would just be released uh, to every person in development of toy, you know, uh, of what's coming up next on the Walmart shelves. You know, if Walmart is going to be the big whistleblower and leaker of secrets in Hollywood, uh, I, I don't know. Th some Something's a little weird there. I don't think that this is any indication of anything except for the fact that um, Hot Toys knows, or sorry, not Hot Toys, Funko. my bad, Funko Pop, thank you. Funko Pop understands that there is a an entire line to be made here, and I don't think that these are going to be the last three that we're going to see. I think that we're going to see many more come out. I think these are just the first three that they're releasing because they know that this movie is going to do really well. They know that people are going to be rabid to get um, you know swag from the film, and I think that we're going to see several other figures coming out. Um, I would love to see um you know uh ramona i i think that she would have some really awesome uh, her funko pop would be fantastic i think that anika you know is going to be a really interesting character that cop pops up michaela cole playing that character i mean i think that there's going to be a lot of n new funko pops that come up none of which are necessarily pointing towards who is the black panther and clearly from what the cast says we don't really know we're not making we're not guessing very well over on this end so we can keep speculating but I don't think that what we see on the Walmart shelves is going to be the indication of who it actually is. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because really, at the end of the day, the toys are kind of irrelevant now because we've seen other toy leaks. So we saw a Lego one that specifically said Shuri Black Panther, yeah. right? We saw the little Lego one, right? So these ones aren't really important. I don't think it really leans us one way or the other definitively. I think we can almost look right past them. I still think it comes down to the whole idea that I still think, and I have thought for a while, we are going to see multiple Black Panthers. I still think there's a very good chance that Shuri dies in this movie. I still think, that, again, no insider information. This is just me purely speculating, but we will find out soon enough. Guys, the question is for you. Do you think there's any relevance to these toy images that are coming out? I don't really think there's any serious relevance to them one way or another. They just kind of make me think what I've thought all along that we're probably going to see multiples. As when you compound that with what the performers said about it last week, that nobody's guessing it. And we've all seemed to be saying that they're making it obvious it's Shuri. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is, but that's only partially true. I don't know. Question is for you guys. How do you think about this? Do you think we're going to get one definitive Black Panther? Do you think we're going to have a whole you know, crew of Black Panthers? What do you guys think? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. With that down and out of the way, we're now going to move on and start taking your live questions. So we're going to open up the Super Chats now. You guys can start firing those in. If you guys are one of our members and you're sending in one of your member chats, we're going to address those in its own video a little bit later today. So start firing in those Super Chats now if you'd like. We're going to leave them open for a couple of minutes. Now, before we get to that, though, we're going to take another moment and thank another sponsor of our show today, my cell phone service provider, our friends at Mint Mobile. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. And now for the plot twist. I'm just kidding. There isn't one. Mint Mobile just has premium wireless from 15 bucks a month. There's no trapping you into a two-year contract or opening the bill to find all these crazy fees. There's no luring you in with free subscriptions to streaming services that you'll forget to cancel and be charged full price for. With my old wireless provider, every month when I opened the bill, it was like playing roulette. I never knew how big the bill was going to be and it always seemed to get bigger. With Mint Mobile, it's totally different. I know exactly how little I'm paying every month and there's never any surprises. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint Mobile, families start at just two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And guys, you get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So transferring over couldn't be easier. So to get premium wireless from just 15 bucks a month and no unexpected plot twists, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. You'll make your wallet very happy at mintmobile.com slash campia. 
And thank you to our friends at Mint Mobile for sponsoring our episode of the John Campia Show. All right, guys, with that down, let's now get over to our Super Chats here, shall we? Aaron, what is in our Super Chats here today? Jesse the Savage sends in some support. Thank you so much, Jesse. Stubba McShave says, TG Maverick, Top Gun Maverick, has now been top 10 box office for 20 weeks. Amazing. Yeah, it, it is insane. Of course, that is attributed to two separate things. One, the longevity and how good the, the Top Gun movie is. Also to the fact that nothing has come out. It's, it's been, when it's competing against massive flops it's uh it's it makes it a little bit easier but still an incredible accomplishment all right what's next uh zaishan says new anime season the most anticipated anime of all time chainsaw man premieres tomorrow also excited for mob psycho 100 hashtag just a meeting and bleach i have never heard of any of these which shouldn't surprise any of you but Chris Chris, Carr. you're you're more plugged into the anime world do you know of any of these i mostly only know about the controversy surrounding mob psycho because of um casting issues oh, okay um because crunchyroll and some other companies are pretty recalcitrant to give um union uh contracts to mm. voice actors right now oh okay um even though the lead of that show was willing to take a pay cut because as you know aaron we get our insurance based on having side contracts and insurance is a pretty important thing yeah okay, help pretty insurance dope. is important john just don't here, get sick or we hurt don't get anything what <laughs> i know oh i mean i look again i we we don't go into any politics here on this show but as a canadian that is the part I, True story. When uh, like first couple of months I lived here, a bunch of my friends were organizing a roller skate night. Mm -hmm. A bunch of us were roller skating, and like one of our friends literally had to say, "I can't go because I can't afford insurance, and if I fall and hurt myself, I can't work, and I'll lose my apartment." Oh yeah. And I'm like, "How do you people live so backwards mm -hmm. down? Yeah. Like, how is just taking care?" of our health need. I, anyway, I'll never understand that as a Canadian, but hey, it is what it is. All right, what's next? This is from Ben Rayner, who sends in a $20 super chat. Thank Woo! you so much. You just helped us pay for some health insurance. <laughs> so scorecard Tom Welling in Supernatural before Stephen Amell, just saying. Um, so scorecard, Tom Welling in Supernatural Universe before Stephen Amell. Okay, got uh, it. Yes. Just saying. Now, here's my question. Did you guys see Doom Patrol Season 4 trailer? There's a great moment now. I can't wait for the... De There's a great moment. Now, I can't wait for December for this show. I love this show. I have not watched the trailer for Season 4. Either. I haven't either. I'm I didn't so realize it dropped. Behind, yeah. um, I, but, oh, God, I love this show. So, it's such a unique, bonkers, out-of-the-box kind of way, but so beautifully done. It, it's Shakespeare in a uh in some wacky kind of veneer like i just i really love it for what it is and yeah right i always thought Stephen amell should have made an appearance in supernatural especially since he's like such close friends with the stars of the show yeah. and you really could have crossed over arrow with supernatural in a special event i mean that could have worked well but hey tom welling's coming let's see how it does all right thanks so much for that ben appreciate that man all right what's next this is from Bobby Jackson, who sends in $10. Thank you. I skipped watching any new movies this week and watched The Woman King again. Still loved it. But unfortunately, there were some intermittent sound issues that, that soured the experience. You know, here's the thing, Bobby. I've said this before. When you consider this, that I'm going to guesstimate somewhere around 20 to 30,000 movie screens across America. Mm -hmm playing an average of three different screenings a day. So j just to round it up, let's say there's 75,000 movie screenings that happen in the United States every day. The fact that such a tiny percentage of them has, I, I'm so, when you understand all the moving pieces, sound, video, lighting, all that kind of stuff that goes into making a good presentation, I'm actually shocked it doesn't happen more often. Like of the hundreds and hundreds, thousands of times I've gone to the movie theaters, I can probably count on my two hands the amount of times there has been a massive technical issue. It, it's kind of crazy. It doesn't happen more often. Still, when it does, it sucks. And I'm sorry you had that experience, man. Mm -hmm. All right. What's next? From Sam Fisher, thoughts on the new Wednesday trailer with Fred Armisen as Fester? This trailer made it look filled with teen drama tropes, not well subverted, in my opinion. What? I, I got to tell you. I I was not thrilled or super excited about a Wednesday show. I was not excited about it at all. That first trailer that came out, I'm like, okay, that looks pretty good. Like mm -hmm. the piranhas in the pool and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. For me, this new trailer upped my excitement. I I'm I was very pro on it. I liked it quite a bit. Chris, Hell yeah. 
Yeah. How how can you not like the addition of Fred Armisen? How I mean, did right, that not great. get you excited as Uncle Fester? Yeah. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Bud. You but it's it? all, it, it all hits in different ways. It's subjective, but this looks great. It looks so fun. Richie at the end? Come on. Yeah. I think the con con the the it wasn't about Fred Armisen being in it that was the problem. It was the the teen tropes. But I think that this is kind of a fun a movie that allows you to have some of those tropes. You know, those tropes exist for a reason sometimes. And when you play into the joke of it and you're you are firmly in when you, when the tongue is planted firmly in cheek, uh, that I, I I'm okay with it a little bit. Is it a trope or is it a teenage story too? Like mm. I don't, I don't and by know, the way, man. Tropes are like any other tool in the filmmaker's tool bag. It can be used well or it can be used badly. If it's used well, then it can work. But let's see. All right, what's next? From Al Renshaw, I am hoping the Super Mario Brothers movie is good so we can get spinoffs of other Smash characters and eventually a Super Smash Brothers movie. Pure nerdgasm. Yeah, you know me. I don't give two squirts of piss about shared cinematic universe. Like, everything's got to be shared cinematic universe. That said, I agree that I really just hope that this movie's good because yeah. that trailer... Again, we all have some issues with the voice of Mario. Let's see. But it was only just two lines. Let's see how that pans mm -hmm. out. But... Overall, the trailer looked so much fun. So pretty. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing this movie. So I'm with you. I fingers crossed that it turns out to be good. All right, what's next? This is from William Dwan, who says, How do you guys think history will remember V? If we're talking about like the old um uh what did they used to call limited series? Miniseries. If you're talking about the old miniseries that turned into a series V with uh singer was the the lead actor's name i can't remember his first name something singer brian bro is it brian no uh <laughs> it was something singer uh and michael ironside was in it as well and it was it was freddy krueger's robert england with his first television appearance as one of the aliens i don't know that anybody even remembers v so when you say how will history remember it i don't think people even talk. they even did a they reboot it, of yeah. the series with um with deadpool's uh, back a, uh, 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 Bacaran. Yeah. With Bacaran. And I don't know that anybody that watched it, but I love the originals V. Mark I, I thought, Singer. Mark Singer. Thank you. I love the original V, but I don't think anybody's going to remember it. All right. What's next? From My Comic Planet says, I got notified that SS San Diego Comic Con registration will start this weekend on Saturday morning. Do you plan on getting yours this weekend, John? No. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll either, if I'm going to go to, one of the nice things is that the, the panel that I do every year, um, that it gets me 20 passes. So I, I use that for myself and, and I'll bring crew and some friends will come as well. So I, I don't have to do that. So no, I'm going to wait until a little bit later on, but really this early they're doing the registrations this I got, early for it? I got notified about the professional badge like a month ago. Really? Wow. Yeah. I wow. think that was maybe linking into WonderCon, but still, where I was like, I know, that's maybe, too early. Maybe we should get a John Candy show booth. That'd be, at, yeah, at, okay. Uh, we could sit there as everybody walks by because nobody will know who we are, but just, still, we'll just sit there lonely. Every so, once in a while, someone will come up and be like, Hi, are you guys the John Campy? No, no, okay. no. They'll come and say, excuse us. We'll get all excited. Someone's coming. They go, Do you guys validate parking? Do you have a <laughs> be, It's like, oh. Yeah. All right, what's next? Jim One says, I think Amsterdam would have done better 10 years ago. Audiences are now trained to see, to, to expect these types of movies on streaming like Don't Look Up. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I, I think like a movie like Smile is something that feels like a straight to streaming kind yeah. of thing. I don't think that's it at all. I think it's really came down to they never moved past the first trailer, which is, hey, everybody, we got this movie with all these stars. And that's all they ever did. Like, I could not tell you at all what this movie is about. I have no idea what this movie is about. And I mean, I think with a lot of general audiences, I think Blade Runner 2049, which was a great movie, but that thing flopped because you never bothered to tell the audience what the movie's about. I mean, you don't have to give the audience all the details of the movie. Just tell them what, what it's about. Yeah. And they didn't do it. And uh, it's just not enough to say, look, everybody, movie stars are in this. That helps, but it's not enough on its own. All right, what's next? Chef Rigo, Chef what's Rigo. up, buddy? Oh. Been a while, no question. Just showing love. Oh, thank you, Chef Rigo. Good to hear from you, man. We gotta, we gotta make another lunch day. Well, you know, my oh, mom yes. is coming to the show on Wednesday with me, and of course, she's coming specifically to see Rob. <laughs> so maybe we can all go see Chef Rigo. Oh, that would be nice. That that might actually be a good uh, good call because Chris will actually be here I that will day. Be. 
Yay. Oh, maybe, maybe Wednesday we'll have to do it. Maybe okay. we'll, All right. What's next? Uh, Tom Weisenberg says, uh, Film Fest Ghent has started today in Belgium, and I got my film student pass. Congratulations. Wow. Saw four films today, planning to watch about 20 more this week. Oh, nice. Film Very festivals cool. are a lot of fun, mm -hmm. especially the smaller film festivals. Because like you're not going to see the next big blockbuster, a lot of these smaller festivals, but you get to see an incredible display of art from a lot of wide variety of filmmakers. And you're going there with a lot. Of, you meet some very cool people who are in the same things you are. If you get a chance to go to a film festival, I highly recommend you do it. Hope you have a really good time, man. All right. What's next? Andy says, there is a worse looking upcoming TV show and it's called Gotham Knights. I was going to say, that's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, also on CW, at least the Winchesters will feature the ultimate thirst trap in Jensen Ackles. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot. But yeah, that Gotham Knights. <laughs> thirst trap. I mean, that might be the worst looking television show in history. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And listen, I haven't seen it. Talk about seen... tropes. Yeah, that yeah, one is. That the... one. It might be great. I mean, look, I haven't seen it. Maybe the show will be awesome. Fingers crossed that it will be. I'm just talking about what it looks like. And mm -hmm. so far, it looks like the worst television show in history. And another Supernatural alum is in there. Uh, the guy who, um, oh, what's it? Misha. Oh. Misha Barton. Misha Barton. Or Misha Collins. Misha Collins. Misha, Collins. Misha Barton. Is a very Barton different from different the different. OC, baby. Yeah, it's <laughs> also an OC alum. Yeah. yeah. But, but Misha, Misha Collins, Collins from Supernatural is in there, so I want it to be good, but uh, yeah, it just looks real bad. All right. I, I'm surprised the Axis Aslab didn't fall on that one. Yeah. Anyway, well, right. there's still time. There's still time. All right. What's next? South Texas Shark says, I went to AMC to rewatch Selena and loved it. What are your thoughts on the movie? God, that is. How? When did that come out? That like, came. That was like. Uh, that was. Jennifer Lopez's, you know, launch. Selena? Yeah. I Yeah. Wait, Is that back in theaters? Was that or... Jennifer Lopez that was in that? Who played Selena? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Was? Okay. That was the thing that made her like a huge star. Yeah, I I listen, it's been forever since did I've it seen it. Did it did it Selena back in movie theaters? I'm I mean, just... a lot of theaters are they, do running some classic ones. Say, sometimes they, they do like anniversary shows. Oh, and yeah, got it. Well, it wasn't a wide release. They bring thing. it up every year you could go down to like i remembered enjoying it but i listen, oh, yeah, i gotta tell you it's been about. well well over then a decade maybe two since i've seen it now. it's so. the 25th anniversary of the film's release oh. then it's been almost 25 years since i've seen it so well speaking of selena if you have if you're not familiar with the song oya Kama Va, it is very catchy oya Kama. all right what's next um josh becker says john did you have a chance to check out the two black adam themes on the soundtrack also glass onion tickets are on sale i bought my i, I well at least i reserved my uh, glass onion which of course is knives out too i got my tickets this morning i'm very excited about that um and no i was doing my live show over the week i was doing a live stream some people wrote and said hey they dropped the soundtrack today for black panther or black uh, adam i should say and I forgot to go around and listen to it. So I have any of you guys in here listened to any of the Black Adam soundtrack that came out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard it myself either, but I'm going to do that a little bit later today. But thanks for reminding me, man, because I totally forgot about it. All right, what's next? BJ sends it a $10 super chat. Thank you, BJ. Who made that Nandor poster you shared last night? Is there a high-res version that we could download or buy? It will look great hanging in our D&D &D room. Uh, Jonathan, go to our community tab. And you'll, you'll be able to find uh, the, uh, it's like the second post from the top in the community tab. So I have no idea who made this. I have no idea. My wife just sent this to me because you guys know I am a massive What We Do in the Shadows fan. I love that show. And my favorite character is Nandor, even though I love every single one of the characters. And you guys, of course, know that I love Andor. Well, somebody made this poster and it's just a, <laughs> it's just a Nandor. And of oh, course, Nandor's name is Nandor the Relentless. And at the bottom, it says, The Unrelenting Begins. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I love this. Again, Nandor, I think, is my favorite character in the show. Uh, so I, I have no idea who made it. I really don't. My wife sent it to me. Yeah. Um, FX Network. Uh, their Twitter account, they posted a very similar one in high resolution, if anyone's interested. Oh, nice. they have, I wonder if they made it themselves. If they did, that's it's absolutely brilliant. I just thought it was fan made, but it looks great. All right, what's next? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Who is this from? From Raymond Viretta sends in a ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Raymond. Says great Picard season three New York Comic Con trailer. Excited to see Amanda Plummer, Moriart Mo Moriarty, Moriarty, Moriarty right. and Lore. Denise Crosby was announced earlier in a tribute to Tasha Yar, or will she be Sela? It's Star Trek Legion of Doom. 
Of course, Sila is Ooh. the Romulan daughter of Tasha Yar. Uh, now we're getting really into it. <laughs> um, um, so, so yeah. I, oh, I if she's back, that would be pretty cool. Now, Tasha Yar only lasted, I think, a season. If that. A season or two. Yeah. Um, on Star Trek. She was, of course, killed by a black goo monster. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, fairly early on like and had happens. sex with data uh -huh. data was her personal sex toy so that that was uh, <laughs> that was the character's claim to fame as well i would love it if they brought her because then they brought the actress back because they did this, it was a very convoluted thing where time travel happened tasha yar went back in time hooked up with the romulan and now her daughter her romulan daughter is now back looks just like tasha anyway they could bring her back too i think that would be awesome all right what's next from Jay King, what a heartbreaking episode. Did anyone else get teary-eyed during Viserys Walk to the Throne? Uh, we were we were watching Viserys Walk to the Throne. Our buddy Tommy was over watching with us. He goes, will somebody just carry the guy? It's like, <laughs> but no, man, he was, he, Viserys is the man. Stairs, mm -hmm. He's like, man. F this, I'm, I'm getting there myself. I don't care. And then the only person he does accept help from is his brother. That moment and that moment you'll see, no spoilers, Oh God, it's just like such a full circle. And you go, man, how far these brothers have come in such a short period of time. Yeah, oh, I, it, it, was, it was a great episode, great moment. We'll talk more about it on the after show a little bit later. All right, what's next? Uh, speaking of throwbacks, looks like AMC is also putting out The Lost Boys. <gasps> really? See, I just looked at their coming soon. That is my all time favorite <laughs> vampire movie. That movie made me start puberty. Like, <laughs> I was like 11 and I was like, what's happening in my body as I watch these vampires? Keeper Sutherland. The mummy was that for me. The I was mummy. like, yeah. Brendan and Rachel? Uh, okay. All Come right. on. Hey, Brendan Fraser I know, used but to like, be. Yeah. Vampires hanging from the ceiling. I like nice boys, not lost ones. And then like saxophone <laughs> player. I'll sw I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I, like, I know uh, um, a movie really means a lot to me when there's even a popular song in it and forever I just think of that song. So like ever since I saw Lost Boys, whenever I hear people are strange, when I don't think of the Doors, I think of Lost Boys. So we actually have the Doors lullaby version on vinyl for I, Tommy. Played it for me. Yes, and the people are strange. I sing it to Tommy as a good night, as a, okay, people are strange, let's go to bed. <laughs> and he's like, mom's weird. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, this is from Mike Joyce, who says, "When da oh, blah, 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 we read that already, didn't we? Nope. No. This oh. oh, this is another one. Same same thing. When uh, Mike Joyce says, when Damon held Viserys to the Iron Throne, that hit me right in the feels. Yeah, it was so a, true. It's, it, look, they just find subtle ways to tell beautiful story in quick moments in this show. Subtle ways to tell beautiful stories in quick moments. That's one of the things they've done so well in this show and one of the reasons that I just drool at the mouth to see it every single Sunday. All right, what's next? Uh, Levartsov says, what did the women think of uh, Dee Dee in She-Hulk? That's Daredevil. Daredevil. Just quickly, just quickly. I really enjoyed Daredevil in that episode. I wanted them to hook up so much. And I, I loved that episode. That was heartbreaking at the end. That was so uncomfortable. And I think it was really, really good. I thought it was the second best episode they've done. Yeah. I still think the first episode is the best one, but I really did like this, really liked this uh, Daredevil one. Do you haven't, have you seen it? I haven't seen it, so thanks for the spoiler. <laughs> well, everybody knew it was coming. All right, what's next? Jay Master Boy, sends Diddy. in a $20 super chat. Thank you, Thank you Jay. Jay a new She-Hulk promo Marvel, a niche new She-Hulk promo that Marvel released yesterday, teasing Hulk versus Abomination rematch 2.0 for the finale of She-Hulk. FYI, the owners of Walmart, Rob Walton and Greg Penner, are the owners of the Denver Broncos. I... Don't know what that has to do with She-Hulk, but okay. Um, it means they're really, really rich. I oh. have not seen the preview for She-Hulk. Again, I, I knew I was going to tune in for the Daredevil one. I, I don't really follow She-Hulk anymore. I tapped out on it, but I still watch the episodes because Anne wants to watch them. Um, I have not seen the preview for it, but if we're going to get Hulk the Abomination back, I want to see, you know, do they continue to have Hulk be neutered? Or are they going to actually let him truly be Hulk again? I doubt they're going to let him truly be Hulk again. But uh, I'm curious. That's piqued my curiosity. All right. What's next? Trevor sends in a $10 super chat. Thank you, Trevor. Give Patty Considine the damn Emmy. I agree. Mm -hmm. One of the best performances I've seen this year. Although I've slightly preferred Rings of Power, the acting in House of the Dragon is on a whole other level. True. I mean, when you go across the board, like, yeah, Patty's been great. 
Um, oh, who who plays Otto again? Uh, um, oh, Otto Hightower. Reese, uh, Reese, Reese Fonz, yeah. yeah. Uh, playing was I mean he hasn't been he's missed some episodes but he is phenomenal. Uh, all of his kids are great. I mean you're right the the acting in this series has been one of the main things that has separated from a lot of the other stuff that's on TV right now. It's just been absolutely top notch. I started going click crazy last night on all of the perf all of the actors and every single one you go on their IMDb and the very first thing is studied at blah 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 prestigious British you know acting university blah 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 did all all these things at the national and the West end and all these incredible theaters and in, in the UK. And so they, they hire very well-trained and very established UK actors just because they're they new didn't to put us. Bad bunny. We're not going to see bad bunny in one of the last two episodes. Dude, <laughs> little, bit of, episodes on <laughs> little bit of episodes snark on coming in from the Campia <laughs> crew. Could. Okay. Right. What's next? Uh, from my comic planet who sends in a $10 super chat. I've noticed lately the, white YouTube YouTube <laughs> the al YouTube algorithm is heavily favoring YouTube shorts over other videos in my feed have you noticed this trend and do you plan on doing shorts um fuck no uh I <laughs> I, I listen from day one that I started putting together the YouTube channel over at uh, AMC I literally got invited over to the YouTube headquarters and their rep literally sat down with me and told me that our content was too long and they honestly told me, this is 100% true. This is not hyperbole. They said, like, oh, even these interviews, so that back then I used to do still do the celebrity interviews at press junkets that are like three minutes long. They're like, what if you took that video, that three minute video, and how many questions do you ask? I said, three. What do you think about chopping into three individual one minute videos? I'm like, you and I are clearly not on the same page because that's not what we're going to do. Could we get more viewers if we do shorts and all that kind of stuff? Yes, listen. I know there is a laundry list of things that I know we could do on the channel that would get more views. I, I know them. I, I know them by heart. But none of them are the things that I want to do. None of them are the things that I want the channel to be or what I want the character, the personality, or the identity of the channel to be. Not that there's anything wrong with those other things. Not at all. It's just not what I want this show to be. So, no, I'm not going to do shorts just because... Listen, if YouTube stops promoting two hour long videos and they never promote them again. Guess what? Then I'm just shutting down. I'm not going to start making content that I don't want to make just so it'll get views. I've never done that. I never will. Um, and uh, so no, but yeah, I have noticed because listen, if you're YouTube, it makes sense because you get to put one ad on a five minute long video, or you can put one ad on a 25 second video and play six of them and get six ads played. I get it. I do. I, I don't hold that against them, but no, I, we're not going to be doing shorts. I hate them. I, if I want to watch that kind of content, I'll go on TikTok. But when I go on YouTube and I see I have a new video from one of the channels I follow, and it's a short that chops up something I've already seen, yeah. I'm furious. <laughs> I mean, we already have our own version of shorts here, right? Like we yeah. take the show and we break it down into like 10 minute long individual segments. So you still because have the discussion. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that works because it's the individual stories. But Will we then do like a 30 second version of that? Mm -mm. That's I, again, nothing against other people who do it. Not at all. It's just not what we do. And it's not what I want us to be. Taylor <laughs> in the chat. Who wears short shorts? Not the John Campia show. No. All right. We're wearing next? culottes. We don't wear pants. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, from William Dwayne says, observation. Amon is Damon with a D at the end. <laughs> yeah, he does have a D at the end. Well, I mean, <laughs> Oh, and <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> Not out listen, the window, though. <laughs> when you listen to a lot of the the old Valerian family names, a lot of their names sound and look look like Rhaenyra and Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, and yeah. like all and Aegon and Amond, and like they're. All their names sound very, very similar. That's why when they named the one kid Joffrey, they're like, that's not a very Valerian sounding name. Mm. Um, so yeah, a lot of them is in that. And don't you know that kid's going to get poisoned in like season three? <laughs> yeah, different kid, but oh, yeah, they're right, good. Right. All right. <laughs> that was a Game of Thrones throwback, not a spoiler. Don't worry. Every, right. What's next? Uh, from John Wicked sends in some love. Thank you so much, John. Oh, thank you so much. John is that Wick? it? Wicked. Oh. Jonathan, is that it? We're out. All right, guys, oh, wow. and that'll do it for today's installment of the John Campia Show. Thank you so much, guys, for being here and making this show part of your day. Big special thank you to all you guys who sent in those super chats, number one, because you gave us great fun things to talk about. But number two, you supported this channel as you did it and all of us involved with the show. Thank you guys so very much. 
for your support. Also, guys, give us your feedback. We tried playing a movie password game today. Did you like it? Did you not? Hey, listen, I'm totally cool trying something new. And if you don't like it, we move on from it. So let me know what you thought about the game. And of course, a reminder to our channel members who sent in their channel member chats. We're going to gather those up and address them in their own separate video. We're going to do that with the channel member chats that came in on Friday. And today we're going to ball them up into one and do one video for that. Keep your eyes open for that. Of course, a little bit later today at 3 p.m. Los Angeles time, we will go live with our House of the Dragon after show. It's a big open spoiler discussion about the episode. Come on back and talk about this amazing episode with us at three o'clock LA time. So for everybody in the room, Chris Carr, the wonderful Aaron Cummings with Joey Bishop. They look how adorable Joey is. Oh my God. Uh, joining you guys in the live chat today, of course, Ray Ora. Producer Jonathan Voico running the show. Also, thanks to Taylor. My name is John Campia. Thanks a lot for being here today, guys. And until next time, my friends, bye-bye.